Everybody ready? Uh, well, good afternoon. As you're all aware, uh, I had a private meeting with the governor and our two chiefs of staff. I will say that it was productive. Uh, if you go back to last year, uh, there was a fair amount of working together on a number of issues and passing a two-year budget that was extremely difficult to do, but we were able to do it. And I think that uh, was what Minnesota was hoping would happen. Uh, the emergency powers have definitely brought a divide between us, and so we uh, tried to circle back or what are the things that uh, are causing that divide, what is it that we could do that uh, perhaps would allow us to try to work uh, together on some of these issues. Uh, we both acknowledge that COVID is, is serious, uh, that we're in a pandemic. Uh, I would argue that we're, uh, we're not any longer in an emergency, but that doesn't mean we don't both take it seriously. So we're trying to find a common ground there. Uh, we talked about uh, the fact that I would like to see uh, the kids back in the classroom. I just think that that's an essential thing for their future. And how do we get businesses up and running in the midst of this pandemic? Uh, I, I brought uh, to, to something to the governor that he'd already heard that uh, in the hospitality industry, it's no longer estimated that 20% of the businesses won't make it. They're estimating that it's about 40% of the businesses may not make it. And so there is an urgency on multiple levels, uh, uh, but the whole idea behind the meeting was to see if we could find some common ground and we're gonna both try to do that uh, as we're moving forward. So with that, I'll take any questions. Are you gonna take the commissioner out on Friday? The question is, are we going to take a commissioner out on Friday? We're, uh, we're having conversations about that. Uh, there's, we have not decided one way or the other on that, uh, but we have had meetings with the commissioners and talked about some of our frustrations. Did, have you, you, talk, did you talk about that in this meeting? Uh, yes. Which ones are in play? I'm not going to have a conversation about that today. So. Have you had conversations with the speaker? You mentioned that you want the legislature to be more involved in the process going forward. Have you had conversations with the speaker to um, stay in session longer so that you have the ability to weigh in on executive orders? So the speaker and I do have regular conversations. We've not talked about whether we should stay in session longer. Uh, frankly, I'm, I'm pushing everything towards next year. Uh, but with emergency powers, the governor has to call us back every 30 days, and so we, we come back. Uh, there's still the idea of the possibility of a bonding bill with some potential uh, tax relief and perhaps some spending for corrections and things like that. And so that conversation's there, but the Senate typically is going to just be in for that day and, and then out. Senator, you've got a thousand plus new cases and 70 deaths announced today. How can you explain how this emergency is over? So the question is, why do I think the emergency is over? Uh, what I'm looking at is the number of uh, ICU beds that, that are uh, taken up by COVID. And frankly, there's not many ICU beds that have COVID cases in them. It's just regular things that people need ICU beds for. So that's an important factor that we want to measure. That's one of the things I'm asking the governor about is what are the parameters that would get us out of emergency? Is there anything that you can list and it should be ICU beds. We should look at the number of deaths. Uh, the CDC just reported that 94% of all cases have some other form of life-threatening illness. And so if you take that and put it into Minnesota numbers, it's, it's like 100 people or so have died from COVID that has not had some other uh, morbidity. And so it's complicated. I think it's serious. I think we should take it serious. But at the same time, we have to measure all these businesses closing, kids not in school, what are we going to do about those issues as well? So you asked for the EDA response? I asked him for, for some parameters. Uh, that was the letter that we sent out to the governor. It is something I've asked him today, and so we're both trying to explore some of that as well. Did this exchange of letters uh, kind of poison the well even more? Uh, you know, or is your relationship still salvageable? Can the, the, the working relationship between the governor and I is absolutely still salvageable. What, whatever that we can do for Minnesota, we should be working on uh, the letter that he sent publicly and then I sent a public letter back. Should have told you that things aren't well, uh, but I will say the conversation today was, was still productive and I, there are things I think we can find that are uh, common ground, but we do, you know, we, we strongly emphasize that we think Kids need to be back in school safely. We think that's really important for their future. Uh, I, t I talk about the lawlessness on the streets and that we, you know, anything related to defunding the police, we should 
not support. So those are some big issues that we're trying to move forward. Uh, but I, I don't, I think the governor looks at those issues as important as well. It's just that they've been a higher priority perhaps for us. Senator, it sounds like you did not really get those goalposts you want. Do you need to tell you exactly what you've been looking for before you get the emergency powers? No, the question is, did, did the governor say anything about what the goalposts are when we're, we're there? And uh, no, and then that's what we have to work, work towards, uh, but it's something we think is important, and I think it's helpful if the public learns what is it that we need to get out of this, this uh, pa not, not the pandemic, but the emergency of it. And we think we're out of the emergency. What we try to measure is how much personal protection equipment is out there, and we have that. Do we have the IC ICU bed capacity? And it's not just the beds that there are there now, there's what we can bring up after 24 hours and bring up within 72 hours that, that is also part of that number. So we're looking at all those numbers and saying, uh, Governor, you don't need the emergency powers. It's gonna be almost a half a year, a half a year of emergency powers with no end in sight. So that's why we're asking them to come up with some parameters so that we know what is the pathway out of here so that the legislative branch can work together with the governor rather than the governor having all the decision making. One other thing I'll say that we brought up is, uh, so th there has been meetings that, uh, the, the phone calls that the governor's staff present information. And I told the governor, if the governor's on the call, I'm happy to be on the call. If the governor's not on the call, then I'll have my staff communicating to his staff. And so it's just protocol that I think is important uh, that the governor speak to me, that the chief of staff speaks to our chief of staff that the commissioners uh, speak to our chairs. It just, it's protocol, but it's not that I don't care and, that, and I do want the updates that come and wherever we can find common ground moving forward, we will. One more question. Well, Senator, you want it? Two more questions. Okay. Okay. Senator, um, you and the speaker had agreement on bonding and, and the tax bill before. That was not the thing that stopped it. Is yeah. there any movement that you're aware of with the House Republicans on those three financial issues. Yeah, I'm still optimistic about a bonding bill for wastewater infrastructure, roads and bridges, that, that kind of thing. I do think there's movement in the House, and so we'll just have to, to pay attention to that. Apparently, there's some window that uh, they don't think we should be doing a bonding bill. You have to talk to the governor and, and his commissioner of management and budget about when that window is, but, but it does feel like there's still potential for that. Last question. So at this point, do you see much of anything being accomplished uh, Friday, and, or will it just be a quick in and out special session? So if there's not agreement for a bonding bill in the House, or if it has to be delayed for some reason, then I, would, I expect it to be a short session, yes. Real quick, how, how would you characterize the tone of the meeting? Productive. Thank you. Thanks. Let's give them two seconds. Sure. All right, go ahead, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in just a few moments, we're going to be going over to revenue with uh, Health Commissioner Malcolm and, and a few others to, to talk about where Minnesota's at in the, uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic. But I did want to take a couple, meeting, a couple minutes to, uh, to discuss. I just had an opportunity to sit down for about 45 minutes with uh, Majority Leader Gazelka. It was a great conversation. I think it's no secret to all of you that uh, uh, we've had a good relationship over the, the year and a half that I've had the privilege to be governor, and he's been the majority leader. Uh, we were able to do something that I think a lot of people didn't think could happen. We found a bipartisan agreement on a budget and tax bill last year, and uh, it's a relationship that I value. It has become a little bit heated. Obviously, we're in an election year. There's differences, um, and I think this meeting was to, to reinforce that mutual respect we have for one another. It was also an opportunity to uh, express that the division of power is incredibly important. The legislative branch and, and the executive branch need to function um, and need to understand those separation of powers are important. Uh, we tried to uh, reestablish some of those principles, um, tried to make sure that we continued to do what I think we did really well, um, communicate respectfully even when we differed, um, and uh, a clear understanding that an election year heats some of those things up, but they should probably stay removed from the personal and stay focused on the things that uh, we want to get done. Um, and I'm just really glad that we were able to do it. I think it's certainly, from a personal standpoint, I very much uh, like and respect Paul Gazelka. That, that aside, 
the responsibility we have to Minnesotans to get things done requires us to uh, to foster that relationship. So I don't know if you have a few questions on. Did you talk about commissioners? Pardon me. Did you talk about commissioners? Uh, just at a high level, and um, we we just. We briefly discussed, we know it's there. I think that's probably for the next conversation going forward. I think this one was a little more uh, to kind of reset the relationship. So what did you tell them? Sorry. What did you tell them? We just wanted to know what it's, all I said was is, is that we certainly disagreed this last time. I asked him, well, what do we need to do to, uh, to make sure that uh, we're able to get these folks confirmed, they're able to do their job. I need them in the middle of all of this, and that uncertainty is, is, not, uh, is not helpful. But we didn't discuss it, and there was no... Um, response other than that'll be the next step. So, yeah. What do you say to the Minnesotans who believe that the emergency is over and then you have extended or overreached your powers? Well, it is not. Um, I wished it was. Um, it is not. I think uh, Dr. Burke's visit last week and the CDC confirmed that. Uh, I saw Dr. Fauci pointed out the seven states in the Midwest were not one of them, but um, Dr. Burks's warnings to us is that we're looking an awful lot like Arizona did before things went poorly. Um, this, uh, we're learning a lot about COVID-19. The one thing is it does not follow our timeline. Um, I think one of the things that we talked about is resetting this idea of the emergency. We talked about the toolbox. Chapter 12 gives us a toolbox that can be opened up to use, whether it's a tornado, flooding, man-made disaster, or as it turns out, a pandemic. And we can pull tools out of that toolbox, and when we're done with them, we start putting them back in. And all I mentioned in this, um, to Senator Gazelka and I would tell to Minnesotans, uh, I think there's a place there where we can collaborate together and the legislature can help us issue some of those tools. But what I would tell you is, if the, pan if the emergency called for this pandemic ended today, our entire testing program would disappear. And to be able to stand that up through the legislative process would take a considerable amount of time and it may never happen. And so, um, by all measures, Minnesota's not out of this yet. Um, we're seeing it around us with a nearly 200% increase in South Dakota. Iowa, the term Dr. Burke said, is fully melting down. Um, we're not quite there, but I would tell Minnesotans if, if we don't do the things that we know we need to do, we very well could be. And, and the challenge is that I think as people look at like hospitalization, infection rates, those types of things, our hospitals are very full right now with other than COVID related things. So any little tip over on that, that's where you get that situation that can run pretty hot. So that would be my response. We've got work to do yet, but I am more than willing, and I think this conversation started to broach that. And, and to be candid, um, Leader Doubt and I have had these conversations about are there ways that we can find some collaborative approaches where Chapter 12 authority, while still vested in the executive branch to move quickly, can have some of the interactions with the legislature. And I do think that's possible. Did you plan to meet with Senator Gazelka uh, again before the special session to kind of make the case for, for no rejection of commissioners? And have you talked specifically to uh, Leader Dow about uh, where he's at and how he is? We have, I've not spoken with Leader Dow on this. I know that um, Speaker Hortman has. I think that was a conversation she and I had this morning about that's maybe the next step. Um, we have not set a formal meeting on that, but I think in all likelihood there will be because I make the case, again, I get it that there's disagreements on this, but if it is about performance, if it is about um, something that is not being done right, it can't just be that you ideologically disagree. Um, that's not a reason to be able to reject, and, and I also um, want to make the case that at this point in time, we're really functioning, that, and I think for the future, there's a lot of lessons learned here, breaking down some of those barriers in state government where we've got commissioners working crosswise on many things together um, is really helpful. And you pull one of them out, um, the loss of Nancy Lepping um, did impact our ability to respond to COVID, and we had to adapt fairly quickly and accordingly. That's really uh, probably not the best way to go. Time right, for one more out here, and then we're going to go over the revenue for more. Governor, I miss uh, regard to the bonding bill, is it your administration's position that a bonding bill can't happen next Friday because of the quiet period, or could it happen? You know, I'm going to wait, and we were just discussing that, and for 
the folks out there in Minnesota were selling bonds and we did sell bonds and, and of course we saved an awful lot of money doing so that it, it's a smart thing to do but just like when you go out and buy a house if you're in a contract to buy a house you can't go out and take out another loan or get a credit card um, that's exactly what it is with the state that we, we have to basically freeze our finances in place during this period and that's coming to an end we did discuss the possibility that we could get an agreement in principle and, and get close and, and agree on together and then when that window opens up we could uh, be able to come in and get that done. I, I really felt a strong desire by Senator Gazelka um, to get a bonding bill done. Very, very clear. We're going to go over meet with Commissioner Malone for our COVID briefing. We can see folks over there. Thank, Thank you all. Feels more normal. Take your time getting over there. Yeah, we've got to go over there. Okay. Okay.